WCOL 1170 Radio and Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We Should Know is on the air. It's Tuesday, of course, each and every Tuesday at 2.30. Uh, we bring you information and hopefully some education about a subject, topic, individual, uh, not only do you need to know about, but somehow is affecting and impacting your life. This week, I'm pleased to have our new superintendent, Dr. Dave Gooden. David, thank you for being with us today. And it's always a pleasure to have somebody from the education field because uh, you lead such a, I guess, a exemplary life in trying to work with our children. Uh, I looked at your background up in Pennsylvania. Uh, the last school district uh, you served as superintendent was Spring Ford Area School District, which is one of the largest districts in Pennsylvania. Uh, your academic track record is distinguished. Uh, history uh, degree from Sh uh, Shippenburg University in Pennsylvania. Also, you got your doctorate. Uh, Education Administration Leadership, uh, Indiana University in Pennsylvania. So, you know, I, I think when I look at the academics and I tie the experience level, um, somebody did some good selection and, and weeding out, or you just happened to land at the right spot. I don't know. What, what do you think that is? Well, J.W., first of all, let me tell you, I appreciate you having me on your show. And uh, uh, it is uh, very, uh, we are very excited about being back in the area. And uh, I had mentioned that, you know, I'm, I'm originally from Fayetteville, West Virginia, or Fayetteville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're, we're, we're just glad to be back in the area after being in Pennsylvania. When I went up there 33 years ago as a youth pastor, it never crossed my mind that I'd be there 33 years later. That's it's interesting you mentioned that, that you went up there as, as a youth pastor. Did Was your design always, because you've been both uh, assistant uh, and principal and principal in the middle school area, was this something that just kind of naturally worked in for you as far as public education or is something that you had a feel for early on? Well, uh, as I said, I went to Pennsylvania as a youth pastor, mm -hmm. and uh, the man that I worked for, uh, uh, Dr. Don Chapman, uh, very godly man and, and very wise. And after about three years of being up there, I remember we were sitting in his office and he said, you know, Dave, he said, I, I don't think you're called to the pastoral ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh and that was hard to hear because that's the direction I was going. He said, "But I think you're you're more of a teacher. You're you're called into edu you know into education and and uh, and so I began to pursue that uh, the, my education degree and uh, and I left the ministry and and uh, it's been uh, it's been uh, open doors ever since. And uh, whereas being in the pastoral ministry was a struggle for me, mm -hmm. uh, it was hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do something that you love." Uh, it shouldn't be hard. Mm -hmm. It should be natural and something that you do. Absolutely. And I, I think it's something enjoyable uh, that when you find that right niche, that right place for you. And I, I think the thing that's interesting with you is there is, seems to me always a parallel between education and ministry because I've always seen ministry, that whole field of ministry, as an educational process. And uh, of course, we could spend a whole show talking about ministry and servicing the, you know, the Lord and that kind of thing. But when I look at your background, what led you? Because again, you were from the Carolinas. Uh, what was this thing other than going up there to be a, a, a minister, a youth minister? Was that a job opening that just was fortuitous, and you happened to see it and go, or did you plan to go there? And and what interested you in the Pennsylvania area? Well, I'm not sure that I ever planned to move to Pennsylvania. My 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 first wife was from Pennsylvania, okay, and uh, and so I had gone up there to do a youth retreat, and and uh, I did it, and and the, and the church they really liked me, and so they asked me to come up, and so I went up there, and 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 that's really how it got started. But uh, as far as my moving into education. Uh, as I said, the, you know, the pastor gave me that, uh, he gave me that advice. He thought I was called into that area. And, uh, and so I went into teaching and I got a job teaching. And, but you had asked about, uh, you know, my trajectory, my yeah. career directory. Yeah. Uh, my, my ultimate plan or my original plan was to teach history. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a master's degree in history. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, that was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my life mm -hmm. because of the amount of reading and uh, writing that you have to do for that kind of a program. 
And that was really my goal. And I was teaching at the time, and and uh, and about uh, at, at some point when I was teaching eighth grade history, uh, I was in a situation where the teachers surrounding me uh, between classes they'd come out and they would and they would complain about the principal all the time, just complain. And I thought to myself, I don't think I can do this for my lifetime to just sit around and complain. Mm -hmm. And about the same time, uh, my proposal to get into a doctoral program in history at Penn State uh, was rejected. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no, uh, there was nobody up there that was interested in my area of research. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, I thought to myself, okay, where am I going to go now? And uh, about that time, uh, there was a, a gentleman who came into our church, and and he just really felt that that. I was supposed to be in administration, and he knew nothing about me. He just, he just, he called me up, and and he just said, "You're an administrator," and that was the first thing he said to me. And and I and and just the you know the doors really just started open, and I started working on my on my principal's papers, and and uh, and those doors just kept opening, and. Uh, and, and, and really, the rest is history. I just followed that trajectory, mm -hmm. and and certainly doors have opened for me uh, uh, along the way, and, and and helped me build my experiences. Uh, you know, you had mentioned the, the school that I've, the district I'd come sure. from, which is a very high performing district. Mm -hmm. But by the same token, on the other end of the spectrum, I've also been superintendent of one of the poorest mm -hmm. uh, districts in mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. And uh, so I've kind of I've worked on both ends of that spectrum, both satisfying. Yeah. Um, both both you know both had meaning for me, and certainly uh, gave me the experience that I needed. Um, and I think that you know as long as I'm learning every day, uh, and I'm growing, uh, and then certainly my my wife my my wife uh, is uh, instrumental in that growth. Uh, I have not mentioned her, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, my wife, Michelle, uh, probably one of the the finest leaders I've ever met mm -hmm. uh, as far as her ability to uh, run her department. She's in HR. She has a, a law degree out of Albany Law, but mm -hmm. uh, she's one of the finest leaders I've ever come across. And she, uh, you know, the word says iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, uh, she really keeps me sharp uh, and, and helps my uh, leadership capacity grow just by always being there and, and just sharpening yeah. me and pressing me. And so it really everything's been everything kind of come together and, and doors have opened uh, as I've, I've uh, as I've moved in my career. But it was always in my heart to come back to the Carolinas. Uh, that was you, you always never lost sight of us. No, never lost sight of that. Wow. And uh, it is I, I've jokingly said it's nice to be back where people talk right uh, <laughs> after being in Pennsylvania for so long because it was always commenting on my accent Absolutely. and, and uh, it just never uh, it just ne really never went away and and uh, so I you know I, it was always my plan and after being 10 years uh, in my last district uh, uh, I just really began to feel that uh, you know someone told me that a wise superintendent knows when it's time to leave and I just really began to feel that it's time to leave and so I I guess it was back in Probably around September or so, I started. Uh, I checked on North Carolina School Board site and I mm -hmm. saw this position was open. I thought, wow, I'll throw my heart, you know, my hat in the ring, mm -hmm. and and uh, never really thinking much would come of it. And uh, so I did. And next thing you know, I was contacted, and and uh, as as I felt things were winding down at Spring Forward, uh, it was very, really, it was just great timing. Uh, yeah, it sounded like it. It, it really was, and uh, so. I've come down here. We're we're building in the area, and uh, and it's really recharged my batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, really has recharged my batteries because everything's new down here. You know, you mentioned something in, in between the the, the uh, Spring Ford uh, district, and I look at Connorsville, and and also the Harmony yes. district. There is a a somewhat of a significant financial shift in in movement. Looking at it historically, when you look back at that now, uh, the the what you saw, say Harmony, for example, yeah. ver versus right there in the suburbs of Philadelphia, which is relatively affluent, um, what were the things other than just money that you saw that could have been done different, or that maybe 
could have been tweaked. I mean, we're always looking ways that not only we could recreate things, but maybe help people think differently. I mean, if nothing else, I think we have to agree education makes people think differently. Yeah. One of the one of the big differences I see between those districts, and you're right, finances are obviously different, but really what the biggest difference I saw uh, was expectation. What did what did our parents expect of their children? Yeah, um, and and that's key. Uh, you know, in 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 Connellsville, uh, we had uh, it was a great little district. Um, but I think in general, the norms for, uh, of what the parents expected was low mm -hmm. and uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, and, and they had low expectations. And, and yet when I went to Spring Forward, I found that the expectations were very high. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the key differences, uh, the family support that was there. And, uh, you know, your educational system is a reflection of your community. And if you're in a community that has high expectations for the quality of education, the educational system will conform to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but by the same token, if the expectations are low, um, that's reflected in the quality of education your children will receive and what they do, what the teachers expect. Uh, and, 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 uh, and, and that that plays out through your community. Mm -hmm. And so if, if, I, if I was going to really identify anything that I wanted to do here and where I think I could be of, uh, of any value mm -hmm. was to, you know, would be to help parents to see that there's great possibilities in education. You know, I think about my own life. Um, you know, we obviously didn't have a lot growing up and. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and mom had it tough. She worked at the yarn mill. We know that in the South we have lots mm -hmm. of textile industries that mm -hmm. used to be. And uh, she worked at the yarn mill, and, and we struggled. And, and uh, But I think somewhere along, and, you know, mom, uh, you know, my mom uh, quit school in 10th mm -hmm. grade. And, and uh, you know, that really we didn't have a lot of folks going to college out of my family. But Hold but, that thought a minute. Yeah, We're sure. going to take a break and come yeah. right back. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're talking with... Uh, New superintendent, Dr. Gooden, will be back in one moment. Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Again, thank you for being with us. If you have been riding down the road, uh, I appreciate you being here and each and every week at 2.30 on Tuesdays. Uh, also, the replays is at 7 p.m. We're talking with Dr. David Gooden, who happens to be the new superintendent of public schools for Sampson County. Dr. Gooden, again, thank you for being with us. You were, as we went off from the break, you were talking about your, your mother and your background. And uh, it sounds uh, a similar story to a lot of folks, especially in rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, there was uh, there was kind of a path for you, but uh, for a lot of folks I talked to from rural areas, uh, a lot of it was not, especially during when I look back at the number of years uh, that I have, and obviously you, but there was a lot, not a lot of things that was, um, should I say, folks there just ringing bells and pushing you forward. You had to have some sense of uh, intuitive thinking that I can do that. I can make that difference. And it came from support to a degree with family, mm -hmm. and I'll say to church as well. Absolutely. Um, so, so pick up on where you were, and in the sense you were talking about your mother. Um, let's continue from that point. I don't, I don't want to lose that because that was a good, that was a good piece. I think where we were. Well, I, I was, I, you know, I was talking about uh, the idea of, of expectations and what what uh, families expect, and uh, one thing about my mother. Um, she expected best from us. Mm -hmm. And really, she didn't really quantify what that was, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, she, she wanted us to do our best. She wanted her boys to do their best, and uh, whatever that best was. And, um, and, and I think that got ingrained in me, that you, you do your best, you, 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 you put your best foot forward, you do your best, and when you do that, uh, doors will open for you. And I know that I've already been 
uh, telling, and I did a little uh, announcement or a little message to the community a couple days ago in which I addressed that. Mm -hmm. That's what I expect. Mm -hmm. Do your best. Do your best. If you do your best, you will be successful. And it's been true in my life, and it's been true in, in many pe uh, people's lives. But that really came from my mother. We didn't have a, we didn't have a lot. Uh, and mom was fond of saying, well, you know, you might not have much, but you can keep it clean. Mm -hmm. And, and how, how simple is that? Yeah. You not, might not have a lot, but you can take care of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was really ingrained in me. That you do your best, you work, you, you know, to do the best you can, because nobody can expect any more than that, than your best. Mm -hmm. And so th that's going to be a reoccurring theme here in Sampson County, uh, certainly from my office what, in my tenure here, that uh, I'll look for my employees to do their best. I'll expect my teachers to do their best, and I'll expect our students to do their best. And if we're doing our best, we're going to be successful, I can guarantee you. Uh, but it, it really does go back to expectations and, and the family uh, the family unit building those expectations in their children that they want the best. Now it does, and, and as you said, J.W., it doesn't mean that the, it doesn't necessarily equate to having money. That's right. And I had mentioned that you know, growing up, we didn't have a lot. Uh, there were times when uh, we had more than other times. But I remember one particular period growing up that. Uh, there was a shack out in the middle of a, a cotton field, and Mom and, and uh, there were three, there were three of us boys, and we lived there in that shack. and And it was one of those setups where half the floor was wooden, and half the floor was dirt inside. and uh, And I'm not sure exactly how long we lived there, uh, but we did live there. But it, but Mom always held to. Uh, you might not have much, but you're going to keep it clean. And I know mom would send us out there and we'd be out there raking and we didn't have anything. And she's got us out there picking up the yard and, and uh, because she just refused to, to, to live in squalor, if you will. Absolutely. And so she built that into us. And uh, it's carried through my life. Uh, in addition to, you know, obviously the Lord opening doors for me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I have to admit that, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that for my life personally, uh, coming back here has been, you know, good for me, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and and spiritually. Yeah, uh, I needed I, I needed to come home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did Did you feel that calling? And, and as you were talking and, and talking about cleanliness and, and certainly I'm, I'm not an old guy so I don't know how I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I say facetiously but I, I remember the, the times that people used what we called yard brooms and they would clean That's up correct. around wherever they, the, the yard was immaculate and, and we've kind of gone into the space now when you drive down roads you see trash beside the yeah. roads and I'm, and I'm going I never used to see that kind of thing so I'm wondering how do we where we're at in this conversation today, how do we spark that piece where we somehow implant in people that this dynamic of choice exists, but it is granular. It's part of who you are. It's part of the nature that you desire. It's part of that piece that, that we, you think about it spiritually that we call free will. Right. Um, how, how do we do that? And what is education's role in that? Well, I think the first thing we have to do is, is we have to continue to talk about that. Uh, we, we live in a society that kind of dictates to us what norms are. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, and you don't, I, or at least I don't hear a lot of people talking about uh, what is your best. Uh, rather, I hear a lot of people talking about what you're going to give me yeah. and what you're going to do for me. Absolutely. And, um, and, and I think that part of the conversation, or a lot of the conversation really needs to revolve around uh, the idea of expectations and, and do we expect the best of ourselves and do we expect the best of others? And I qualify that with when you expect the best of others, there also has to be that, that grace in there to recognize that there's differences in my best and your best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can't sit in a situation in the judgment chair and say, well, you're, that's not the best. Yep. Uh, because my best and your best are different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing your best, it, you're going to be successful. And, 
And I think that, you know, if, if the message that I have for families is that you instill that in your children, bring it into yourself, but instill it into your children that you expect to be, don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. uh, don't don't expect somebody to do something for you. Uh, you, you do your best. And uh, and, and I, I just, you know, I just don't think that that's enough. That's talked about enough. And I think as a school system, you know, if I can instill in my staff an expectation and, and going back to the two difference between the school to school districts. And, and that is really the difference, because in many cases, my staff didn't expect the best. Mm -hmm. Well, these children are poor. Right. So. Right. Yeah, they're not, they're not going to mount anything. Right. They, they have they have no yeah. no end result. They have no legitimacy in the market. So therefore, let's just close the door right here. Right. And and that's where we get into that conversation that you see not only in school systems but you see in funding formulas that oftentimes we and I and I have a little trouble with this. We identify ourselves quote as marginalized communities. Well, you know, a while back I asked a, a national group that, um, and I just said, you know. I didn't know that I was marginalized. Right. I said I was living in the country in the woods by choice. But right. I didn't know that mean marginalized. And the response was, well, we apologize because you're right. We stereotyped you. Right. And that's interesting when you brought that up. Yeah. Well, if you know, in, in the school system, you talked about the, and you asked about the role of the school in this whole process. You know, really, we provide the best that we can provide. And that, that's all I'm asking. That, that we, I know we have limited funds. We, we, there are things that I can't purchase and I can't do down here because of the money. But there are things that we can do. Mm -hmm. and, and it really does go back to having an attitude of, of what you expect from our children um, and holding to those standards mm -hmm. and, and always allowing grace to be a part of that, uh, uh, that equation. And... Uh, because I also know that, that our kids aren't going to learn from anybody unless they feel like uh, they're loved. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. That's such a simple idea. But when I think back on the teachers as, as, you know, as disadvantaged as I was, and I certainly didn't come up through the public school system being the stellar student, mm -hmm. but I do remember those teachers that held me to a different standard. Mm -hmm. I think of a gentleman... Uh, when I was in seventh grade, he was a teacher uh, over at Fort Bragg. That's where my dad, uh, he was uh, in the military. And we went to a, uh, a junior high school. And Mr. Holder, uh, he, he cared about us. Mm -hmm. He cared about me. He used to refer to me, my, my last name is Gooden. So he always uh, uh, called me Mr. Bad Out. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I... He cared about me. And mm -hmm. so I remember him and I learned from him. I don't remember any other teachers, but I remember the one that cared about me. Mm -hmm. And those are things that don't cost any money. Those are things that we can do. Absolutely. We can care about our children and, and we can love them and expect the best for them and, uh, and not sit back and say, well, we don't have this or we can't do this. And, and, uh, and because it, that's that's a that's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. And if we just if I can just instill a, a, and make sure that our people are loving our children and expecting the best, I, we're going to be successful. We're going to make changes in these young children's lives. Now, you've been uh, on the job for a few weeks as we're having this conversation. And obviously, you had not had time to look and get in detail with a lot of the communities in the county. I know that's forthcoming. And a lot of folks is going to see this and say, well, we want to hear more from him. We'd like to, to talk to him. Uh, you, you strike me as a guy that's pretty open, that's ready to sit down with parents, PTOs or whomever and, and have a conversation. How important is that for you? Uh, it's 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 paramount. Uh, that's it, p people need to feel connection. And and when I was talking about just caring and, and loving people, well, that carries over from my role too. My going out and talking to folks and and giving them the time uh, and listening to them is is how I'm showing that I care about them. Uh, and 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 they need to feel heard. They need to feel validated. And uh, but it also gives me the opportunity to speak into their lives. And, and maybe hear something that maybe they've not heard before. 
We're going to take a break and we're going to come back. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us. And uh, I want to encourage you as we go to break, call a friend and tell them to tune in. We're talking with uh, Dr. David Gooden, who is this new superintendent here in Sampson County. And we'll be back in a moment to talk about some additional things that may be in store for you as it relates to education right here in Sampson County. Many things have been stolen away during this time of uncertainty. No crowds to cheer on their favorite teams. Applause and pageantry have been stripped away. Thieves are looking to make your home empty and silent. Star Communications has the answer you are looking for. Security by Star. Automation and affordability along with friendly service makes for a security choice that is sure to keep your family cheering. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We Should Know is on the air. I'm your host, J.W. Simmons. It's my pleasure to be with you today, and also my pleasure to be talking with our new school superintendent, Dr. David Gooden. Uh, David, as we went to break, we were, we were talking about uh, a lot of those issues um, related to expectations and related to accomplishments. We had reached that um, area of, of the ability just to be able to be communicable, to be able to be where you sit down and have a conversation with people. Um, and on break, I mentioned, it just strikes me that, that you're that kind of guy. I, I want to go down that road for a sure. minute and, and just see uh, where... And, and looking at your background, <laughs> you've kind of done a lot of stuff, so I feel comfortable in putting this out there. Uh, do you feel comfortable in reaching out to those folks? Sometimes it, I don't think folks really get, certainly I don't, I've never been in, in a position as a superintendent, but it's such a weighty job. Sometimes it's an effort to make yourself get out of that office to reach those people that we talk about that we expect a lot of. Yeah. Is that something that you look forward to doing? I, I certainly do, and, and it's necessary. And, it, and one of the ways, and you're exactly right, uh, my schedule, I've only been here, it's my 10th day on the job, and already my schedule is booked. Uh, it's solid. So uh, one of the things that I've done is, and I've learned to do, is schedule. Uh, certain, for example, uh, getting out into the buildings. Uh, we have 18 buildings here in the county uh, that we service our children. Uh, and and uh, so I actually have to build that time into my schedule to get out mm -hmm. and, uh, and to talk to my teachers and uh, spend time with the children. And uh, uh, a little story, I, I was sharing this a little earlier that uh, sometimes when I go into the elementaries, uh, the children ask me, well, you know, I'll tell them I'm the superintendent. And they'll ask me, well, what does the superintendent do? What, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And uh, a little fella yesterday, uh, we had, I, I, I asked the group, I said, well, what do I do? And the little boy said, you're the boss. <laughs> and I kind of chuckled and I said, well, that's true. Mm -hmm. I said, but really my job is to make sure that you're learning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, then it, and then I'm able to go into and ask them, are they learning and what are they learning? So it really opens up those opportunities. and. Uh, but I, I, you, you think about doing little things like that and just scheduling those times uh, and making myself available uh, to go out. And, and once we get through the COVID and, and once we get on the other side of this thing, and we will, yeah. uh, and, and uh, you know, that those opportunities will present themselves more uh, because it, it's very difficult to be personal when you're doing a, a, a Zoom meeting and you're meeting with folks. Uh, it, it's hard to read them. Um, I, I, I'm more of a uh, talking together and, and sure. talking face to face. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's been very difficult to, to reach out and have that impact. But as soon as we get on the other end of this thing, and I think things are opening up, uh, it'll be my goal to really schedule those things in and make sure that I don't allow the fires that, that I'm naturally putting out as part of my job uh, to get in the way of doing what's really important. I know uh, back in, in at Spring Forward, uh, many of our elementary teachers, they knew when I was having a bad day mm -hmm. uh, and that it was hard. Uh, because I'd go into a kindergarten room and I'd sit on the floor and, and, and talk to the kids and play with the kids. Mm -hmm. And I might take 45 minutes and do that mm -hmm. and just sit there on the floor and, and, uh, and just play. And, and it helps me to remember why I'm doing this mm -hmm. because you really can get caught up in the minutia of putting out fires. And, and so you, you have to make that a priority. I, I, I've tried to communicate to my team already that I want y'all to come talk to me mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to come talk to me, to come talk to me and, and, uh, 
and, and we'll find the best course of action. Uh, I've often said that I'm not the smartest person in the room, but I'm smart enough to know that I'm not smart enough that I'm not the smartest enough person mm, in the room. Absolutely. And then I try to surround myself with people who can uh, speak into my life and help give me guidance. And and, uh, and so that, that's that been effective for me. Uh, and, you know, to have a, uh, a real sense of, uh, I, I guess, humility mm -hmm. and, and recognize that you know, I don't have all the answers. Absolutely. But if I can build a team around me, uh, I'm going to be much more effective. But there's no doubt that... Uh, uh, over the next few years, I'll I'll be out in the community and, and get involved and um, and really, uh, life is uh, true leadership is about service and Absolutely. about serving and, uh, and 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 doing the things that uh, you know you not, might not expect uh, uh, somebody in a leadership position to do. I have a good example I had mentioned earlier about uh, Pastor Chapman. Uh, who was my? Uh, he was the uh, pastor of the church where I went up to Pennsylvania. Um, I came downstairs in the church one, and now Pastor Chapman is a very—he uh, was a very godly man, probably the wisest man I've ever met, and just just a godly man. Uh, and I went down the basement, and he was in a sewer trap, uh, cleaning out the sewer in the in the bottom of the church. And I thought, here this man is, uh, very well educated. Uh, and he's down here cleaning out the sewer. And uh, humility in action. Never forgot it. Never forgot that example of his leadership because it was a fairly large church. And he didn't have to be down there in, that, in there cleaning out the, the line. And yet he, he, he went down and did it. And, uh, and that was just one of many examples of, of servant leadership uh, that I saw in him. And... Um, and if I've tried to do anything, I've, I've really tried, and I'm sure I've, I'm, I've fallen short, uh, but uh, I've tried to use that as a model, that there's nothing that if I'm going to expect my employees to do something, uh, I need to be willing to do it as well. And, uh, and I think that hopefully uh, I'll be able to, to live that kind of life in the community uh, as a community leader and set that tone. Uh, and that'll be and that'll come out when when, you know, we're able to get out and work with different groups and, and do different things. And and uh, and, and I, I think that's important for a leader to, to show that. And uh, so I'm hoping I have those opportunities. And I believe that those doors indeed are going to open um, for me in this area because it looks like there's lots of opportunities to serve. Absolutely. And I, and I think anybody that, that hears you talking today that's ever been in a leadership course or taught a leadership course hears clearly a consensus builder in, mm -hmm. in the, at this conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what, what I'm feeling from you is that, that you are about finding consensus mm -hmm. and understanding uh, and trying to pull that together. Yeah. Well, that's, we, we live in a very polarized society, don't we? Where uh, if, if I'm right, you can't be right. Dangerously If polarized. I'm right, you're wrong. Yeah. And that is not a, it's not going to get anybody anywhere. Uh, the art of leadership and the art of government itself is, is really the art of compromise and finding common ground and, and where can we move together. And we're going to have to do the same thing in the school system. Um, there's probably lots of controversy that I'm not even aware of yet. Uh, but, but if we can, and, and I've always said that really my job uh, as a leader in a school system is to find that common ground. If you come to me with a problem, it's not either, it's, it's not a matter of you being right and the school being wrong or the school being wrong or, uh, or the school right and you're wrong. It's a matter of, uh, is there a way for us to work together for the, uh, ultimately for the benefit of our students? And, and I, that's really what I see my job as, uh, to be able to bring those factions together and, and make sure that we're doing and, and keep first and foremost what's in the best interest for our children. I, I, a thing that struck me is, is you were making that commentary, uh, and, and clearly as a historian, uh, my question would be, as, as a historian, as you think about what we've just been talking about, and there's a whole culture out there that has been identified as a, the council culture, uh, how, how important is it for us to look at those things that we were just talking about, our history, where we came from, uh, the granular level development of that. How important is this to recognize that and move forward with it um, rather than just saying, well, let's just mark that out of 
uh, out of our history and, and not even look at it. It's, that's something that's always been a question for a lot of people. What's going on here? Uh, is, is that something we really want to do? You know, no matter how bad, um, you know, World War II was or World War I or whatever it may be, can we legitimately counsel that and say it didn't exist? Of course you can't. Uh, you know, you, it, I mean, it's, it's true that for those that ignore history, especially societies, they're, they're, they're doomed to repeat it. And the things that we think would not happen uh, suddenly happen. Um, so it, it, there's there's certainly lessons in history that we need to we need to grow from, but it really comes down to the ability to uh, to learn from those lessons and 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 recognize that that every society is built upon things that we're not proud of. But the but the societies that thrive are the ones that that learn from those lessons and recognize it. Don't hide it. Don't don't try to to run from it, but recognize that this is something that happened uh, and, and we're going to grow f from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I find that people who don't uh, listen and don't learn from history to have a tendency to, 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 to repeat it. Yeah, get caught in that. They get caught in that segment and they can't get out of it. That's correct. That's which, right. which somehow damages not only society would you say it damages the person and the soul it, it does and and it gets to where uh, fear becomes the, uh, the 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 norm uh people live in fear and and they're uh they're 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 one of the beauties of our society is that we are open and that supposedly we all can have a different opinion um but that doesn't mean that i'm right and you're wrong or that you're wrong, and you know you, that you're right, and I'm wrong. It means that 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 we are different, and uh, we have to learn to come together and, and work together as a society if we're going to be if we're going to be where we want to be. Everybody wants things to be better. Everybody. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever met anybody that doesn't want things to be better. Absolutely. Uh, but but it's how we get there, and I can't get there by forcing you to believe or do something that you don't believe and, but I can love you and I can't accept you as a person um, everybody has that capability okay. and uh, we'll take a break and pick it up from there sure. ladies and gentlemen we'll be back in a moment uh, we're coming up on our last segment here we should know uh, we encourage you to stay tuned call a friend and we'll be back we're talking with the new superintendent back in a moment to get the most out of your electronic devices, you need a strong internet connection and a protected home Wi-Fi network. You need high-speed internet from Star. Star has the fastest, most affordable high-speed internet service available for all your devices. We have no long-term contracts or high-pressure sales. Our service speaks for itself, and switching is hassle-free. We take care of everything with free installation from a local company. High-speed internet from Star. Internet at the speed of life. Welcome back. Thanks for being with us today. We're coming up on our last segment here for the day's show. I want to remind you, you can reach us via email at we should know edu at gmail.com. And of course, the name of the show is We Should Know. And each and every week at 2.30 on Tuesday, a new subject, new person talking with you. Sometimes we have to bring people back a number of times. It's a deep uh, well that we're drilling in, so we get them back two or three different times. Uh, so we want to hear from you what you think. Keep sending us those emails. Also, remember our snail mail contact is post office box 1482 Clinton North Carolina post office box 1482 Clinton North Carolina the show is aired multiple times a week uh, 2 30 on Tuesday 7 p.m. Tuesday Thursday on star channel 16 also it's uploaded to YouTube uh, Facebook, social media platforms as well. So you can pick it up after the show airs uh, at a number of these locations. We do enjoy, again, your comments, your suggestions on commentary that we've had and even shows that you would like. Please continue to send us those. I, I certainly appreciate that. And for those folks that just stop me out in the community and say, hey, I was glad to hear about, hey, our new superintendent. And I, en I enjoyed that show. Uh, yes, and I'll go ahead and answer the question I know I'm going to get. We will have him back already so I can uh, pretty much uh, assure you of that he strikes me as the kind of person who wants to talk with you so let's get back to the show today and, and talk with uh, Dr. David Gooden and 
kind of get some additional words here of, uh, <laughs> I guess, of wisdom and leadership. I think we've hit all those areas, uh, uh, Dave, in the, in the area of leadership, wisdom, and understanding. But I want to kind of touch on some things I picked up just looking at your background. And, um, and sometimes I do some kind of deep dives. Some of it I use, some of it I don't. But uh, I picked on picked up on something back from the uh, Spring Ford Area School. Uh, and you had a, an interesting situation when you, you won the state championship up there, I believe, and that was in basketball? Girls basketball, yes. I mean, that was a pretty pretty huge uh, honor, I would think. It was great. Those girl, that was a great squad of girls. Yeah, so, so give us uh, kind of your sense of the importance of sports in our school system, particularly in our public school system. Uh, what does that bring to the table for you? That's a great question. Uh, it's been my experience, at, and, 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 and I certainly was involved in sports. Uh, and, and it really, for me, it, it kept me connected to school. Uh, I was uh, involved in track and cross country, and, and being part of a team uh, it was, was so important and so meaningful. And many of our kids, uh, they need that connection. Um, for whatever reason, maybe the academic portion of school isn't really where they're at and, and, and what interests them. But I've seen it many, many times. Students that are involved in extracurricular activities are connected to school. And it, it, it's their motivation. It keeps them, it keeps them focused. Uh, you have students, I, I've, seen, I've seen football players, for example, that they'll struggle during most of the year, except during football season, because they know they need to keep those grades up. But also it gives an opportunity for students to uh, feel connected and, and, and feel part of a team. I remember most of the coaches that I've had throughout my, throughout, you know, growing up and uh, going to school. And, and uh, there was just something special about that relationship that went beyond the classroom and that, that kept me connected. Uh, and and I, I, I'm open. Uh, my high school years were rough. Uh, I certainly wasn't. Uh, the top student, and uh, I was involved in things I shouldn't have been involved in. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it was sports that kept me connected to school, and sports uh, really got me into college. Uh, you know, I was a runner, and and uh, and while I didn't get the scholarship, I know that the uh, the coach at Brevard uh, College in Brevard, North Carolina, uh, he knew I was a runner, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, you know, it kept me connected through high school and helped me get through high school uh, when I certainly didn't necessarily have the, uh, uh, you know, some of the traditional supports uh, that, that, a, that a student would have that was going to be moving on to college. But that connection to sports kept me going. And, and it's the same for our children. Uh, they need to be, not everybody's going to fit in the same mold and not everybody's going to be academic. Uh, and yet I've seen it time and time again, those students who are involved in something that connects them to school, it keeps them moving through. And, uh, and I can't underestimate uh, the, the connection value. But when you also look at the, the value of being part of a team and being able to work together and, and recognize it, you had mentioned that girls uh, uh, championship team. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a couple young ladies on there that uh, they might have been five feet, five two. They're, they're little. They're the toughest defenders I've ever seen in my life, and they work together. We beat that year. We beat some of the. We beat, uh, for example, Cardinal O'Hara before we went to uh, before we went to the state championship. And Cardinal O'Hara, you know, it's a private school, private Catholic school, and and they, you know, if you look at who wins state championships in Pennsylvania, usually it's the private schools, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and those girls were huge compared to our girls, but they work together as a team, and and that's something that that's something that uh, when you go out in life, being able to work together with other people mm -hmm. is a key skill, right. and you learn that through extracurricular activities, whether it's drama, whether it's whether it's sports or whatever the case may be. So you can't underestimate that and and the value of that and keeping kids connected to the school, keeping them focused, and and also learning those soft skills that are going to be uh, so important uh, as they move on in their life. 
so I can't uh, I can't uh, overstate the importance of, of of what our kids are doing and being able to provide the, those opportunities uh, for our children because in many cases uh, that's that's what keeps them connected and that's what keeps them focused and uh, they're able to learn things that uh, otherwise they're not going to learn about teamwork and and giving and taking and uh, and how to take uh, quite frankly how to take criticism. Mm -hmm. Uh, and recognize that these coaches, they're, they're, they don't get paid a lot, and they're doing it because they love coaching, mm -hmm. and they love uh, interacting with the students and, and giving. And uh, so I, I, th th there's uh, one of the worst things I could ever imagine for our school system is to, is to, uh, to either uh, short circuit or get rid of extracurricular activities for our kids. They need it. They need to be involved. Another thing that, that I think you, you mentioned as well in, in one of the commentaries uh, that I read was uh, this, this whole idea of um, the, the work and how important it is in the world of arts and how arts, there's a relationship between art and excellence. Yes. And I found that to be interesting when I was looking uh, at some of the comments you've made in the past. Uh, historically, when I was with the community college, we had an arts program and we would bring a visiting artist in mm -hmm. and it would go to all the public schools and it was different art forms, everything yeah. from quilting to uh, classical, you know, guitar or yeah. what have you. How important is the arts to you? Because we oftentimes see these things as Again, extracurricular, meaning that they're not part of a curriculum. Uh, how does that blend in your thinking with with your leadership model? Well, I think that I, I think anytime <clears throat> you always build on your own experiences, and I just I'll just take a minute to relate an experience. When I was in uh, a young boy in school, uh, our teacher took us to the symphony. Mm -hmm. Now, you know. I don't know how many people have been exposed to symphonic music or, or anything like that, but I never forgot it. It was the most powerful thing I'd ever heard. Hearing a full orchestra playing Mozart, uh, it was it was truly powerful. You know, and I was raised down here in the South, and uh, you know, and, and use either gospel music or country music, and and uh, but I'd never really heard a symphony, mm -hmm. and it, it and it it, it 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 changed me. It changed my appreciation for for music, and. Uh, and I think that our kids are in the same situation. They, they need those experiences um, and, and be, to be exposed to those things. Uh, and, and, and it builds, it builds and it lasts. I want to touch on one other thing quickly because we're coming to an end okay. here. But I also noticed you, you were heavily involved. Uh, you had an exchange uh, program in Ireland, I think. Oh, we did. And that was, uh, that was interesting. I, I know I'm, I'm with the Rotary Club, and you know, we're kind of involved with that whole process of exchange. You, you, you're a former Rotarian yourself. Uh, but I think that's something that a lot of folks just can't really wrap it. How does that, how does that help? Is that something important? Uh, do you see that something that maybe would be a, a beneficial moment in this area? Yeah, it's certainly being exposed to somebody else's culture uh, is, is enlightening. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had the best conversation with the president of Ireland when I went over there. He and I sat down and, and had a nice conversation. And uh, he's a, he's a university professor. He taught yeah. history and, and, uh, but, uh, you know, having those experiences are life changing. And uh, you're right. We, we had an exchange program yeah. with Limerick, Ireland. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was interesting because, I mean, it's that that international connection mm -hmm. now, I think, is is critically important that. And the reason I'm saying that from an education point of view in elementary school, middle school. For folks to understand, they're so much bigger uh, and they're so much more part of such a gigantic globe than just that school, whether it's yeah. a rural school, whether yeah. it's one of those, again, that word that I'm not really in favor of is a marginalized place. Yeah. Uh, but but they're so much bigger now, and it's all there for them. It's, yeah. it's in front of them. And I'm sure you do that. You, as you look back, you think, wow, you know, I've done quite a bit, but... I could have, trajectory could have been different. Yeah, it opens up a world of possibility. Well, we've got a, a few seconds here. I want to give you about 15 seconds to close any, any additional comment, 15 seconds. Well, I just want to say it's, it's going to be my pleasure and honor to serve uh, the community of Sampson County and, and serve our families. And uh, I look forward to it. Well, and certainly I want to I want to go ahead and say this in, in closing today. Uh, you have an open mic. I look forward to having you back. Uh, as you probably suspect, this uh, 
portfolio I have here is pretty thick. I didn't even get into any of the questions related to what's happening in the North Carolina schools. Sure. But certainly, I think you'll be ready when we come back. And I'll, I'll give you a month or so and All we'll right. talk again. So thanks again for being here. Thank you, JW. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us today. A great conversation with our new school superintendent, Dr. David Gooden, uh, the kind of person you want to talk to. We look forward to seeing you again next week with a completely new show. And again, keep sending us your comments and commentary. And as always, as we close our show, we look at you and say, may God bless. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.